Hello everyone, Ian here at Able City in Burbank. Today I'm checking out version 6 of Shotput Pro. If you checked out our blogs from City Year 2016, you may recall I stopped by the Imagine Products booth, spoke to Michelle, and at that point version 6 was pending. She got to give us a little sneak peek of what was to come. Now it is available for download. We're going to open it up today and check out the new features. Here I've got the traditional layout for Shotput with a few uh, changes, but we'll look at the other bigger changes uh, to the physical layout of the program in just a second. First, I want to go up and show you these tabs up here for our preferences. This is uh, this tab right here is asking me about preferences for detecting media and how to work with it. Uh, I'm going to go to my offload sequence here and optimize drive. I'm going to keep it there. Well, one of the good things about Shotput is that we can have multiple offloads uh, simultaneously to different destinations. And this is asking how it wants to, uh, what behavior you want with that situation. I only have one drive, so I'm just going to keep it in the optimized uh, drive location here and I'm going to do a checksum again checksum is one of the big reasons why we would use shot put because in essence what a checksum is doing is it looks at the amount of data at the media card and then looks at the amount of data at the destination and verifies that they are identical so I'm going to do something called a uh, checksum 64 and you notice that I do have other conventions that I can use here. I'm going to use the 64. It's one of the faster ones. Um, and I'm going to go over to the next tab. And desktop notifications is going to give me an auditory notice if I have uh, when the offload is complete or if there was an error. Also, we can send notifications by email and by text as well. Here are the reports. Uh, I'm going to keep these as they are. One of the nice things about Shotput is that for every offload it does generate a report or multiple reports depending on how you set the preferences up. I'm going to get a report with my offload. I'm also going to get this PDF and I have opted to have thumbnails generation generated. I could have a single frame grab or I can have four. This is really nice to have four frames. It's sort of the beginning, middle, and end of the shot. And if I elected on every report, I could have a custom PDF image that could be your company logo, something of that sort. Uh, it is checked off, so right now it is by default going to put uh, the uh, Imagine Products, the shot put uh, logo onto every report. Right here is my log of all the offloads I've done with this program so far, and you can see that. Uh, pretty much all of them have had the four frame frame grab uh, in the PDF report. The nice thing about this is that this is an inventory of everything that I've done. So if I ever needed to replicate or reproduce these reports for anybody, I could simply go back here and um, grab them and reproduce them. This is the standard, pretty much the standard layout that we've come to expect from Shotput. In that respect, it used to be with Shotput that you had to offload all the media on a card to your destination. It was an all or nothing uh, process. If I go in here and change this tab here, now I can have more of a drag and drop uh, type of format and I can go in and choose individual shots and drag them to a destination drive and it will do the reports, but you do have that ability to sort of drag and drop functionality. I'm going to keep it in the traditional uh, layout and go down here and I'm going to click on this plus button and get a new preset. Uh, we're going to offload a Canon card, so I'm going to create a folder for it. All right, and I'm going to get into all the particulars of the naming conventions for your folders because it is really extensive, uh, but you can get very detailed in this uh, process of naming your media and the information that you want to be associated with it in order to organize it. You can go in here, for example, and I can create a custom color tab. And if I find a color I like, there it is. I could add it to a preset palette. And you'll notice that if I close this out, 
now I have uh, that color associated with this card. So you could have uh, media with a certain episode or subject matter, things of that nature uh, with a common color code. It is checked off, so it is active. Uh, if I go over here and click on this icon right here, uh, it opens up those preferences again. The last thing I have to do is set a destination. So I'm gonna go in here and hit the plus button and I'm gonna go down to my training drive here and I'll create a folder with the same name as I called the offload. All right, so now that I've got that all squared away. Now we have a destination. I can go ahead and close this out. So we have a destination, we have media. I literally just take this, drop it right there. I could put um, more offload information up here and I'm just going to click on here and begin the offload. Now notice it goes through a two-step process here. It's now replicating, it's offloading the data from the car to the destination drive. One of the great new features of Shotput 6 is I'm gonna go up here and I'm going to, I'm on a Mac, I'm gonna control click and I can pause all active items. Now Shotput is going to pause at what they call a logical place, meaning that they, they, they're gonna maybe end or stop or pause the offload process after a shot. So now I could do a company move. I could even take this um, whole thing, move it somewhere else. And once I'm resituated, control click, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to resume my offload. So we're gonna uh, have this replicating process, then we're gonna have the verification process. When it comes to verification, it will be a deeper shade of blue. Then we're going to have the reports process, which will be a light green and then a deeper shade of green. So I'm just gonna let it uh, do its thing here and you can see the process of the color codes. And here's that deep blue banner showing you the verification process is now taking place. Now we're starting the report generation process and it starts with the green, light green background. And now as it's filling in its data, you're getting the darker green banner on top. Once this finishes, I asked for it to give me a ping to tell me that's done. So we'll just wait for that and you, know, you, you will hear the, uh, the ping verifying that all processes have been completed. All right, so we've got our ping. Now we can go in and look at our drive. And there's my Canon card one. And what I wanna look at right here is this PDF. I'll open that up. Of course, we have the contents here. All the good stuff is right there, all right? And we're gonna go into the reports. And you can see a summary of how much material was offloaded, how it was offloaded, the date and time. And you can see what OS system I was using to do this as well. So for every shot, I have the four frames. And then below it, I have the identification of the particulars. So this was shot at 24 frames per second on the Canon camera C300 Mark II in 4K H.264. And a checksum destination uh, showing me where on my drive it went. So the next shot is offset with a different uh, colored background. And again, just goes on and on like this. So you can see all the good stuff. And you have these really nice full page reports. I think it's a very powerful way to be able to communicate this information, not only that the, the process of the offload was successful, but you also have uh, the means of those frame grabs to get a sense of what was occurring in each shot. It's a very powerful way of uh, communicating all this information. That wraps up my look at Shotput Pro version six. Thanks for watching. 
og se igen så.